that means that we will have to borrow money to fund our military. How do we maintain our status as, as, as the leader of the free world when, and financially and militarily when we have to borrow money just to fund the military? In terms of gold and silver, look, if I had one trade, it might be gold only because it was reclassified the world's only other tier one asset by the Bank of International Settlements, which is the most powerful bank on the planet. Yet, I think silver is the trade of a generation. If I had two trades, I'd buy silver maybe with the intention of down the road when the ratio between the two correct trading it back into gold. Interesting thing about silver I'd like to mention. It is a pleasure to welcome you to our meeting. We will dive into the murky waters of government policies and their profound effects on finance. However, in the midst of all the chaos, a debate is raging on. Where should we place our faith? So buckle up, because today we're not just analyzing the financial implications of government policies. We're unraveling the timeless debate on gold, silver, and cryptocurrency investments. Here's Andy Schechtman to start the video. I want people to research this for themselves. I don't need to read this over. You can, in 10 minutes, you can read about it. But the last piece that I found really interesting was that both Cloward and Piven agreed that a mainstream media would play a critical role in their organized attack against America. To quote Cloward and Piven, as the crisis develops, it will be important to use the mass media to inform the broader liberal community about the inefficiencies and injustices of welfare. You read this and you will say, my God, they are doing this right now. And, and they are overwhelming the system. Who's going to pay for those 12 million people? Um, the Congressional Budget Office, which is the last nonpartisan group in Washington, came out and said this is before the 12 million people came in here. Uh, by 2031, in less than seven years, 100% of tax revenue will go just to pay the um, uh, interest on the debt and the mandatory en entitlement programs like the $99.5 trillion shortfall in Medicare, the $77 trillion shortfall in Social Security. And, and, and when you realize that military spending is, um, is, is a uh, discretional line item on the budget, that means that we will have to borrow money to fund our military. How do we maintain our status as, as, as the leader of the free world <clears throat> when, and financially and militarily when we have to borrow money just to fund the military. It ain't going to happen. That's before the 12 million people came in here. Who's going to pay for them? Their schooling, their, their housing, their food, their medical. They are overwhelming the system and, and creating a, a system that will break, ushering in universal basic income, especially in the big cities, which are becoming nightmares. Uh, throw into it the impending commercial real estate issue, and Jared Bernstein is the lead economic advisor of the United States government who advocates for losing the reserve status. What better way to lose the reserve status than to tell Saudi Arabia, the linchpin of it, and OPEC, hey, we're going green. Look, I want a clean world too. But to go and say that to Saudi Arabia means you are threatening the existence of the petrodollar and then sanction and weaponize and even confiscate foreign reserves and tell other people you can do this, but you can't. I mean, it's a, it's it's just a complete and total joke. Don't forget about the cocaine that they destroyed without checking the fingerprints or any of the I mean, the whole thing is a joke. It's a complete and total joke. I live not too far from Mar-a-Lago and, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone just bought a house there for 30 million dollars on Palm Beach. And they're trying and it's 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 a fraction of the size of Mar-a-Lago and Mar-a-Lago is a much better piece of property. They're saying it's 18 million not the value. That, I mean, the whole thing is just a joke. It's really it's really a joke. And it's an embarrassment to this country. It's embarrassment to a guy like you who risked his life fighting for a, for a country that that held a higher moral ground than the rest of the world. I, I find it to be more repugnant than anything we've done mismanaging the world reserve currency. It's what we are doing to the reputation uh, to 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 liberty, to the reputation of a country that that was once the beacon of light around the world. And now people are saying, what the hell? has gone on. And, and your question about what is better. Yeah, I mean, Satoshi is what you're talking about. You can buy little pieces of Bitcoin. Sure, it's great. Uh, people can own it and hold it in their own possession off off the exchange. No counterparty risk. In terms of gold and silver, look, if I had one trade, it might be gold only because it was reclassified the world's only other tier one asset by the Bank of International Settlements, which is the most powerful bank on the planet. Yet, I think silver is the trade of a generation. If I had two trades, I'd buy silver maybe with the intention of down the road when the ratio between the two correct trading it back into gold. 
Interesting thing about silver I'd like to mention, the Silver Institute came out with their numbers recently and said 185 million ounce shortfall this year, over 200 million last year. But in it, they it's very conspicuous. They do not mention silver in the military industrial complex at all. No, there is no military breakout. Two years ago, I gave a speech in Vancouver, the same place I saw you last time at, at, at Jay Martin's uh, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, one of the best, one of only two I go to conferences all year. Everyone should check him out. He's a mutual friend of ours and a great dude. And and in it, I, I said, there's 500 ounces in a Tomahawk cruise missile. And a guy came up to me. He sent me this cup. He uh, He says... I work for the Department of Defense and I actually helped design the Patriot missile and I know there's silver in it, I just don't know how much. Well, last time we were there, when I saw you last, he came up to me after my last speech and he said, you know what, you were right. There's about 14 to 15 kilograms in the tip of a tomahawk. And he showed me all sorts of pictures, said, don't worry, this is all declassified. And we talked for an hour, he just he texted me a couple of days ago, I gotta get back to him and talk some more because they didn't list it in any of the supply demand fundamentals. So when you think of all the missiles, high tech missiles, not just Tomahawks and aerospace that need silver and ask yourself, why would a, a commercial bank like Bank of America be short 1 billion ounces, naked short of silver? Why was JP Morgan so short? Why did JP Morgan pay a $920 million fine for suppressing the market and is still allowed to be the custodian of the world's largest silver trust? The largest fine the Justice Department ever issued and yet they're still allowed to do it. The point of it is, is, is the silver, is the military industrial complex holding the price of silver down so they can create all of these high tech weapons to sell all around the world, to fund the continuation of war all around the world? Could it be that simple? I don't know. But ask yourself, if indeed it was confirmed by this gentleman, a DOD consultant who said, yes, there is that much in a tomahawk. Think of all the missiles and ask yourself, why is it not in the supply demand fundamentals? And then ask yourself, why would a handful of commercial banks hold the largest concentrated short position in any commodity traded on COMEX found in silver? It makes no sense until you just take a step back and say, could that be it? Fine line between conspiracy and reality. I'll let you all decide. But in my mind, absolutely why they are allowing these commercial banks to suppress silver in order to fund the military industrial complex's efforts. And who is the military industrial complex? I don't know. Is it BlackRock and Vanguard? They own everything, including the ETFs. Could it be them? Maybe. Don't know. I'll let you all decide. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the intricate world of finance and investments. Remember, knowledge is power and understanding the implications of government policies can help us navigate uncertain times with confidence. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more valuable content. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks again.